Coming up on this episode, I'm gonna show you how we did an extreme makeover on this wall by building these cabinets. I can't believe I did this myself, to be honest with you. We will have saved thousands of dollars in the process, so if that sounds of interest to you, let's get started. You know, if you've been watching my channel for a while, that I really, really wanted a fireplace for Christmas. So a couple of months ago, I built this fireplace from the ground up essentially, but now I want to do built-ins on either side. I got some stock cabinetry from my home improvement store. We're gonna install that. But first, before we can do that, we need to reinstall the tile on the floor. Now, when I built this fireplace, I kind of went gung-ho and ripped out all of the tile because I didn't really know exactly what I was gonna do but I figured if I was going to be making a mess <laughs> that I should just rip it all out at that time and not destroy my beautiful fireplace once it was done so even though I went a little overkill on ripping out all of the tiles I needed to rip out tile anyways and so even though I ripped out a few extra and we're gonna now have to replace those <laughs> it's not really that big of a deal We're gonna put the tile in prior to doing our cabinetry. Reason being is if down the road I need to switch out the cabinetry or anything like that, the tile will be there. So I have bought some stock cabinetry that we're gonna be putting in here as our lower cabinets. These are actually upper cabinets, but we are gonna convert them into lower cabinets. The reason I didn't do lower cabinets is because then they would have come out almost flush with our fireplace, and I wanted it to be a little staggered. So we're gonna need to do something to lift them off the floor, and then we'll put a topper on. I bought this plug-in light fixture. It just plugs in, and I actually have a plug right here that I can plug it into, but we're gonna make it have the appearance of being hard wired into the wall and you'll never know that it wasn't. Stick with me and I'll show you how we're going to be doing that because I'm really excited about this and I'm really excited for the ability to bring in that additional lighting that I so desperately want in this living room space. So now it's time to get powerful. Before we can put our base frame in here, I do need to remove part of this trim molding. We don't want to remove the whole entire piece, just the area that we're going to be putting our base in. So in in order to do that, I'm gonna be using a multi-tool. I've heard it called an oscillating tool. It's just basically a little handsaw that we can just kind of come in and cut that through and remove our trim. <laughs> Now we're gonna build the frame and I've got some just regular two by fours. We need it to be 15 inches deep and 59 and 1 8 inch wide. This is just straight cuts at its finest. And so we'll just measure and make a bunch of cuts and then we'll go inside and use our nail gun to put it all together. <laughs> So now we've made our cuts and we are ready to start assembling our base. We are gonna be using my big nail gun. This is a framing nailer. It's a serious nail gun. If you're intimidated by this, then go ahead and use a drill and some screws. I like my nail guns and nails are typically stronger than screws. So I've already got my air compressor full of air. So all we need to do is attach it. Before I wanna attach it, I'm gonna put on my eye protection. And it is loud, so if you want to wear ear protection too, feel free to do that. So all we do is we pull this back, put that on, and it pressurizes, and now we've got a powered nail gun. So we are just going to build this frame out. In building our support frame, I make sure that I put a support beam underneath where each cabinet seam will be. Before we can install our cabinets, we need to do a little bit more prep work because I'm gonna be doing some shiplap on this back wall and that's gonna disguise where we're gonna drop our cord down. So we're gonna be installing some one by twos, vertically, horizontally, I don't know, up and down. <laughs> 
So I marked where some studs are and then I'm gonna be just making some other marks with a level for convenience purposes. We just gotta get some of the ugly stuff done first before we can beautify. <laughs> I simply take my framing nailer and nail my one by twos into the studs so that they are nice and secure. I install a crossbar on the backside to give additional support to the back of our cabinets, as well as a ledge for the countertop to sit on eventually. Then I install another stud right behind where our filler pieces will go just to act as an additional brace behind that as well. Okay, so we've got this all prepped and ready for our cabinets. So I'm gonna go ahead and slide them into place now and then we are gonna start assembling. Okay, so we've got these kind of dry fit in here. We have not attached it to anything, and I actually had to let this sit for a couple of days, but I wrote myself a note to remind myself to cut out the outlets before I attach these. So I really didn't want to mess that up. Because I have this kind of lined up where I already want it, I've just made some marks for convenience purposes, so when we put it back in, we know exactly where where we already marked it because we have it kind of how we want it and we're about to mess that up. <laughs> so we're gonna pull this out and we're gonna cut an outlet hole in our cabinet so that we can access the plugs and everything like that. I didn't really wanna mess with electrical so we're gonna just leave the plug where it's at and just kind of frame out a box around it. So we're gonna use a drill and a jigsaw for this one just so we can get it nice and precise. Then once the hole is cut, we can replace the cabinets and install them permanently. Later, I may go back in and trim this hole out and make it look a little bit better, but for now, it'll get the job done. To connect our cabinets, I take some clamps and clamp them together and pre-drill some holes in the face frame. And then I use some cabinet screws to connect them together. Then I check the cabinets for level and then screw them into our back support frame. Now it's time to install our filler strips, which we need to cut off just a little bit for so they fit. And for this, I used a jigsaw and I also applied painter's tape to protect the filler strip as I cut it. Then I installed it the same way I attached the two cabinets together. Now, don't worry about any minor gaps for now. Those will be filled in later when we caulk everything. And now it's time for some shiplap. And for that, we have a special helper. All right, so this is my sister-in-law, Anna, and she has volunteered to come help me with my yes. side shelf. I'm very excited. Yay! <laughs> and so we're gonna just start cutting. Do you know how to use one of these, Anna? Mm, I do, Kay. watch. All right. Okay, so she's gonna just take the one we just cut and she's gonna use it as a pattern and you can just use it to mark all of them so they're all even. So she's doing a great job. One down, how many more to go? <laughs> a bazillion. <laughs> she's a pro. <laughs> We're getting there. Now with our ship lap cut, we are ready to install and I just start at the top and make sure it's lined up with what's going on on the fireplace and nail it right into place right on top of our strips. All right, so we are making excellent 
progress. I'm really happy with this. We've got all of our shiplap up on both sides and now we need to drill a hole for our light fixture because we are gonna drop the cord down behind the shiplap and in order to do that, we need a pretty sizable hole. So I've got this hole saw attached to my drill and it's two and a half inches, which is enough room to get that plug down. We've got it marked how we want, where it's located. It should be center. And we are gonna just drill a hole with this and it's gonna be awesome. Next, we are going to install our countertop. First, I take some one by twos to build a frame so that it's a little bit taller and nail that down into the top of the cabinets using some shims to make sure everything is nice and level. Then I take a couple of 16 inch deep plywood shelves and then I just cut those down to fit the width and slide them on top of our frame and nail that down into place. And of course, we don't want to have an unfinished edge, so I cut off a piece of flat one by two trim and nail that into place as well. All right, so we are making really good progress, but before we get ready to do paint prep, we still need to do the shelves. Even though our shelves will be stained, we need to get them ready to go prior to paint. And that's because we're gonna be adding some trim. We're just gonna go ahead and rough in the brackets to hold them. So all I'm gonna be using is some one by four pine. Inexpensive because we're gonna actually rough it up to look just like the mantle here. It's gonna be stained the same. And I've already kind of marked out where I want the shelves. So every i think it's like one two three four five and then one two three four five and those are going to be our two shelves the most important thing is is we really do want it to be level we're going to kind of mark where this shelf is going to sit and i'll show you why so then i'm going to take a pencil that i always keep tucked in my hair and we're going to draw a line where the top of this is going to sit our shelf is gonna be deeper than this, but we're gonna use this also for convenience purposes because it will be as thick as this. So take that line where we just drew and we are gonna line it up the other direction so it's like the thickness. We'll double check for level here again. We're gonna draw a line here. So that is the thickness of our top shelf. Now we know where that needs to line up. And so what we're gonna do is build a frame that will be inside our shelf so it's a floating shelf it doesn't have any brackets or anything like that but we need some support inside i've got quite the mess going on here so i hope my neighbors can bear with me a little bit longer and get the project finished but now it's time to start building our shelves and we're going to start by building the frames so i'm going to take a two by two and measure it to the width of the area These little things are gonna be the brackets to support our shelf. So we're gonna need at least five of them per shelf. And so to save time, we're gonna take this piece, line it up here, make sure it's nice and square, and then just make a mark. And then you just keep making these until you have at least five per shelf. And so that just makes your job easier. So then you don't have to remeasure every single time you have them all exactly the same. So this is gonna be the brace and the brackets that's gonna support our floating shelf. So we're gonna just line it up and press down. Boom. <laughs> Now I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna assemble this shelf. This is kind of like the boring or structural part, but once it's assembled, then we can beat it and scratch it and make it look really old, and that's the fun part. All right, so we're gonna take our wood glue and run a bead on one side. And then we will take our front piece, kind of line it up. We're gonna start on this edge and we're gonna put some finish nails. Okay, oh, I should probably put on my, always protect the eyes. Okay, we'll do that again. <laughs> We're gonna just kind of run down as we go and make sure that it's, it's flush. A lot of times these boards aren't completely even and that'll all work out in the end, but if you run this way, then you can kind of bend it a little bit as you go. Just always checking. Right here, we need to push it out a little bit. Perfect. 
Then we're going to repeat the process on this other side. So we basically have the makings of a shelf here, but we want to really make sure that it's sturdy. I want to show you what's going on so that you can see, understand why I'm doing it. So, and then I've got our frame that we already built and this will kind of slide in like so. But you're gonna notice that there's about a one inch gap here and that's gonna cause a problem. So the weight will sit on this frame, which is perfect, but we don't want this hanging on just a couple of finishing nails. We want it to be more sturdy than that because I have some little boys that might like to climb. I'm not saying I want them to, but they might. What we're gonna do to solve that is I cut some blocks that we're gonna just put in here. We're gonna slide them inside here to act as a brace. And we're gonna put about four of them in. You could put five and you could put some in the front, in the back, but I'm just gonna put them towards the back here. Then it will make this a lot more sturdy and that's what we want. So, so I basically have them where I want. I'm gonna carefully slide this out and just kind of set it aside. You see, I can kind of put some weight on it and push on it and this doesn't give and it does. And here's where if you have any pent up anger or frustration or just you need to get out of you, this is where it's going to come into play. To give it that really beat up old beam feel, just take a whole bunch of random objects and tools from hammers to chisels and screws and chains and just kind of give it a good old fashioned beat down. After you do that, you still need to give it that old weathered worn down feel so we take out our electric sander and kind of sand everything down really well paying particular attention to any corner area so that it is more rounded rather than square we do not want any crisp clean lines here so we're gonna dry fit these now. I'm actually gonna leave the support braces in while we paint it because I'm gonna be putting some trim in between the shelves, which will cover up some of these rough edges as well as offer a little additional support. I start by installing our support bracket where we originally marked, making sure that I nail it into the studs and also that it's still level. Then I just slide our shelf on and it fits perfectly, but do not nail it into place just yet as we are just putting it there temporarily then we're going to take some one by three flat trim and trim out everything hiding all the unfinished edges then remove the shelves and prepare for paint you want to put spackle over any nail hole and sand it smooth and then also caulk any joints and seams i prime just the countertop area because everything else is already primed do not skip this step, seriously. It really does make the difference in the overall finished look of your project. So take your time doing this and do a good job. I use my paint sprayer to have a very nice even coat and paint it in Sherwin-Williams extra white color in a semi-gloss finish. While that's drying, I use a gel stain in the color Kona and stain our shelves and then I do a coat of polyurethane. This has been 
been the project that will never end and that's probably because it's just a busy time of year right now. I mean, I got in a fight with a paint sprayer. I won for the record. <laughs> but we are going to install our shelves and I'm excited about that because I am so ready for this project to be done. I need a shower. I need, I need some chocolate. I don't know. Now once the shelves are dry, I slide on the shelves and put multiple finish nails in every area that we had one of those bracket arm pieces. You'll be surprised how well the nail holes are hidden because of all the nicks and dings that we intentionally put there to make it look old. So that's really a nice little added bonus. Then there's just a little cleanup and reinstalling the cabinet doors, which I also sprayed to match the same colors everything. Now there was a gap between the double door cabinet that really bothered me. So I actually had an extra toe kick and I cut it down and nailed it into place to fill in that gap. And it looks so much better. All right, it feels great to not have paint and sawdust all over me. Now the last thing we need to do is install our light fixtures. Now I got these off of Amazon for a great price. So I will put a link to these in the description box below. I screw our mounting bracket into the wall and tie some twine to the end of my plug with a weighted heavy needle and thread it down the space behind the shiplap. Then I pull the thread through our pre-cut hole and pulled the plug down and then I mounted the light fixture to our mounting bracket. So fishing the cord through was a little bit more challenging than I thought it would be. I thought I had allowed myself enough room to get it through. I kind of tested it out, but when it was all said and done, I was able to get this one through with just a little bit of coaxing, but this one, came a little bit of a challenge and lucky for me there's a bathroom behind it so i actually had to cut a hole in the wall of the bathroom which i'll patch later but not ideal so if you are going to replicate this i would recommend giving yourself a little bit more wiggle room i use some one by twos i'd recommend using like a two by three at least but isn't it cool don't these light fixtures look like they are hard wired into the wall they're not and then they've got the special plugs so this it can work as a remote and we can turn them on and off see or on it's a remote but it's got a strong magnet and so we're going to just leave it on the wall full time so it's just going to act as a light switch next to our other light switches and we did not have to hire an electrician to do this that was a lot of work but it was a lot of fun and so rewarding now i just want to emphasize that i am not like a finished carpenter by any means i cannot believe that we built these to be honest with you and i'm thrilled it is just so rewarding to be able to do something like this saving thousands and thousands of dollars and i am just totally excited about the end result and pretty proud of myself if you enjoyed this episode here's the fireplace build episode i think you'll enjoy that one as well and to all of my diy niners i just want to tell you that you are more powerful than you know we'll see you next time bye